Hello Math 100 students, how are you doing? Welcome to my first video on YouTube. I'm still learning how to make these videos looking good. So it may look unprofessional at the moment, but I'm hoping at least this video helps you studying for the final. I had to post this video because I was not able to cover some proofs during the lectures. And I expect you to know these four proofs before the final exam on December the 4th. In this video, we are going to prove two things. First, we're going to prove differentiability implies continuity. Second, we're going to prove the product rule, which is f prime g plus f g prime thing, which we use quite a lot in this course. Okay, let's jump right in. This is the first statement that we're going to prove. If f is differentiable at a, then f is continuous at a. What do they mean by f is differentiable at a? What do they mean by f is continuous at a? We're going to study that first before we pr actually prove this theorem. All right, as a warm up, let's discuss what it means to be f is differentiable at a. It basically means f prime of a here which can be written as two different limit expressions. One is using the h variable, limit h approaches 0, f of a plus h minus f of a, all over h. Or we can write it as a type 1 formula, which is limit as x approaches a, f of x minus f of a, all over x minus a. It's basically y2 minus y1, all over x2 minus x1 formula. I put a box around this expression because uh, I'm using this limit expression within the proof, the actual proof here. So let's put a star around this, star around that. Uh, before I proceed to the next warm up, I would like to mention that uh, f is differentiable at a means limit, this limit here exists. It's like not like infinity or negative infinity or dna. It has to be a finite number. That means f prime of a is some finite number. Okay, next warm up, what it means to be f is continuous at a? Well, we talked about this a few months ago. f is continuous at a if limit as x approaches a f of x equals the y value f of a at x equals a. We must make sure that this limit exists and this y value is defined. If they're equal to each other, we can say that f is continuous at a. Okay, I think we're ready to prove the following statement. If f is differentiable at a, then f is continuous at a. Whenever I try to prove a statement, I always look at the conclusion and remind myself, what do I want at the end of the proof? Here, the conclusion statement is f is continuous at a. So I write down the definition of continuity, which is limit as x approaches a, f of x equals f of a. This is what we want at the end. The next thing I look at from the statement is the assumption, which is if f is differentiable at a, it basically means from the warm up, uh, f prime of a equals this limit expression here. And it, it is a finite value. I look at the expression carefully and look at the numerator here, f of x, f of a. And I look at the conclusion, which is f of x here, f of a here. Maybe we can, get, we can achieve this accomplishment by starting from the numerator, f of x minus f of a, and then divide this thing by x minus a, and we can use this assumption somewhere within the proof and get the result. So let's start from this expression f of x minus f of a is equal to because i want to get the denominator part here the denominator part to be x minus a i multiply this expression which is f of x minus f of a by the top and bottom by this expression which is x minus a over x minus a so if I rewrite this expression, of course, don't forget about the um, bracket here. So again, if I rewrite this expression, I'm going to move this x minus a as a denominator of this expression. 
and then just put x minus a beside it. So it's like this. Um, f of x minus f of a all over x minus a times by x minus a, like this. Of course, the left-hand side still stays the same, which is f of x minus f of a right here. Okay, so now it looks like we can use our assumption, which is f is differentiable at a, if we have the limit expression beside it. Because as you can see, this uh, uh, slope expression has uh, the limit expression attached to it. Then we can use the differentiability. So uh, our next task is to you know apply uh, limit on both sides, and we get um, the following limit as x approaches a f of x minus f of a equals limit as x approaches a and this whole thing which is f of x minus f of a all over x minus a uh, times by x minus a like that. Now after putting these uh, limit signs on each side I'm going to apply the limit laws right here right here and on the right hand side I'm going to write it separately limit as x approaches a f of x minus f of a all over x minus a times y limit as x approaches a x minus a like so and I realized that oh this expression is our assumption which is from the warm-up this expression is equal to f prime of a and by the assumption because it's differentiable at a this can be rewritten as um, f prime of a times by uh, the right hand side limit here if you put the a into this very nice polynomial function then you get a minus a which is zero and I would like to mention that you know this f prime of a is by the assumption then uh, if I rewrite the left hand side limit as x approaches a f of x minus f of a I don't need the bracket anymore because uh, f of a is just a number so we don't have to worry about this uh, limit expression limit expression only affects f of x now okay now uh, you realize that 0 times any finite number becomes 0 and then the left hand side is basically this same thing as before and you see the good news if you add both sides by f of a then that's what we want limit as x approaches a f of x is equal to f of a and this is our uh, finish of the proof so this shows that f is continuous at x equals to a and let's put a small box indicating that we are done with the proof all right thank you everyone i'll come back with the uh, pro uh, start proving the second one which is proving the product rule okay see you soon all right welcome back students the next one to prove is called the product rule and it states like this if f and g are both differentiable, then the product of two functions f and g prime equals f prime g plus f g prime. Uh, some people use different order, but it's basically the same thing. So I'm going to stick with this order here, f prime g plus f g prime. Okay, uh, like the previous proof, I'm not going to jump right into proof. I'd like to mention something about warm-ups first. And then once you're ready, we're going to do the proof. Okay, the first warm-up is the definition of the derivative. We actually have seen it before, uh, the previous proof. Uh, it's basically a is changed to x now. f prime of x is equal to limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That's only for when you're dealing with a single function f. But the problem is, what if a function is product of two functions? For example, f and g are multiplied together and you're trying to find the derivative of it. Basically, it's same as before, except that it's just longer. 
it just looks like longer. Limit as h approaches 0 is the same as before, but you just change uh, the uh, x expression to x plus h into both functions because f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus the original function, which is f of x times g of x all over the h. Uh, if you understood this expression, then I think uh, this, this proof will be straightforward. The next warm up that we're going to look at before the actual proof is called the magic zero. So in pre-calculus, do you remember uh, when you were studying for completing the square method? Uh, let's say we have y equals 2 times x squared minus 6x. You added some number in this empty space and then subtracted that number as well because we, have, we don't want to change the original question. That's why we have to add zero. But adding this magic zero gives you this, you know, plays an important role. For example, uh, before in high school, we uh, took that number in the middle term and divided by 2 and square, we got 9. And then we put this magic number plus 9, negative 9, which is magic 0. And then realize that this portion here, uh, by adding 9, you get uh, you get a perfect square trinomial, which is x squared minus 6x plus 9, and it turns out this works out to be 2 times x minus 3 squared minus 18 at the end. What I'm trying to tell you right now is that this is not the main topic, by the way. Uh, adding like a beautiful zero, <laughs> magic zero, in some mathematical expression, uh, it can give you a very nice result at the end. So let's do the main topic here. Third warm up is that the magic zero in calculus. Um, oh, I don't know. This is typo. In high school, no. Of course, if you took the calculus 12 in high school, then yes, you probably have seen this. So um, in calculus, the magic zero, at least in this proof, is an expression like a weird expression like this minus uh, f of x plus h times by g of x. And then, sub, uh, sorry, add f of x plus h times by g of x. So you subtract this expression and you add this expression, and this is the magic zero for this proof. If you understood this far, then I think you're ready. So let's jump right in. Prove that if f and g are both differentiable, then uh, product of these two functions prime equals this. All right, so by the definition, uh, I'm going to start with this f of x times g of x prime is equal to, by the definition, limit as h approaches 0, um, <clears throat> f of x plus h, g of x plus h um, minus, I'm going to actually skip some, uh, make some space right here and write down the original function right here, minus f of x and g of x, and all over the h. And then using the magic formula, we get minus f of x plus h times g of x, and plus f of x plus h times g of x, like so. And then you realize that uh, the GCF for this pair is f of x plus h, so we can take out the GCF. And then for another pair we see is this. Uh, this pair, it has g of x and g of x in it, and we can take out the GCF, which is g of x. Taking out GCF for this first pair, I get the following expression. Limit as h approaches 0 f of x plus h bracket g of x plus h minus g of x uh, and then looking at the second pair here I see that g of x is attached to the right side of each expression so we can um, take out the GCF which is g of x using you know right hand side attachment like distributive property here, and then all over h. 
And then I realized that, oh, maybe I can split this uh, fraction into two different fractions and using the limit laws. For example, uh, limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h times limit as h approaches 0, g of x plus h minus g of x all over the h plus um, limit as h approaches 0, uh, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h times by uh, limit as h approaches 0, g of x, like this. And because we are assuming that f and g both are differentiable, that means I can rewrite this expression as um, g prime of x, and I can rewrite this expression as uh, f prime of x and then looking at the first limit here it's basically um, f of x because f is differentiable in other words f is continuous and we can if we put the h as a zero then definitely uh, as h approaches zero then definitely it's f of x and then the right hand side of the limit is basically uh, g of x because there's no h in it and there you go and if you switch their order right here to right here then we get f prime of x times uh, I'm just gonna write small g of x plus uh, f of x times by g prime of x and this is what we wanted and therefore that's the end of the proof Okay, that, this is the end of the first video, and I'm going to uh, make another video on proof of the Fermat's theorem and Rolle's theorem as soon as possible. Okay, have a great evening, everyone, and bye for now.